Hello and welcome to Metra AV Tech Tips. I got it right this You got week. it right. I'm Brent. I'm Adam. Welcome aboard. So Adam, tell us what's going on. Whoa, before you tell us what's going on this week, cover the usual basics. What do we got to uh, do? Well, but yeah, let's do a little bit of, of housekeeping first off. So first oh, off, yeah. yeah, exactly. So first off, thank you everybody who's watching today. Uh, we're really, really thankful again that you came back and watched another episode with us. Uh, and as always, like, share, subscribe, hit that little bell notification to let you know when we do go live, which of course is every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Now, uh, yeah, however, you can still watch us at any time. Yeah, 2 exactly. In the we, morning, all of our episodes 6 a.m. go up can and save there. We repeat our episodes because yeah. we're that much fun. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we also last year, Series, the last six episodes, we had a series going on where we were giving, uh, talking about networking and, and other devices and basics of, of networking. Uh, and we gave away uh, the 4-channel 4K PoE NVR kit, so the SPYP NVR 4K IT 4K. Uh, and we have a winner. You did read that off the I box. Did, I did. Okay. Yeah, no, I did not memorize <laughs> that. Uh, we have a winner. Uh, we want to reach out and say, Faytonia, you have won. Uh, we've already uh, sent you a comment on the comment that won, so please reach out to us so that we can get your information and get that sent out to you. And thank um, you for your comments. And thank you for your comments and everybody else who, uh, who did that as well. Now, uh, on top of that, now for the next... I'm pretty sure it's the next four episodes. I have to double check that. But over the next four episodes, we're going to be doing the same thing. We're going to be going ahead and... But not the same thing. So, I, now what I told you is not true, so don't, don't jump in just yet. So, uh, I did not update you on that. I apologize. So, yeah, no, and leave us a comment uh, on today's episode uh, and on the I'm next up, uh, couple episodes. Uh, well... That that comes here in a minute, okay. and we'll we'll get to that as well. Uh, but leave us a comment on to, on today's episode, either over here in the chat section on this side, or down in the comment section below. Or if you had if you're watching this after the fact, leave us a comment during that time as well. But we are doing the same thing. We're gonna be giving something away. But leave us a comment about what we're talking about in today's episode, or a question about what we're talking about in today's episode. In that case, I have to ask, since things have changed, what? Are we giving away? We are giving away both an, an HDM AIO2 and a CS-IR kit CCUS. Oh, is that why you have them here for That's me? That's why I have them sitting here for you. So, uh, Brent, if you'll uh, if you'll be my Vanna White and, and show them off for us, uh, we're going to be giving away the AIO2 uh, as well as the CS-IR kit CCUS. Uh, the reason we're giving these away, honestly, is because we want them in your hands so you can try them out and see what you can do with them. So. Oh, particularly this one. Yeah, this one's the, awesome. The CSI ARC at CCUS with the relay built into it. Uh, what I was going to make a requirement was that you tell us how you would use it, but then I realized you may not have it yet and have a chance to play around with it. So instead, just leave us a comment about what we're talking about today or a question about what we're talking about to be put in for a chance to win it. Uh, and for the next four episodes at least, uh, you'll have a chance to, uh, to leave another comment on those next episodes for another chance to win it as well. And, and at the end of those four episodes, we'll, we'll announce the winners. In that case, tell winner. them a little bit about what the AI AIO2 does for them. So the AIO2, of course, is our HDMI all-in-one repair tool. Uh, it's going to have everything that we've done in the past as far as uh, power supplementation, hot plug interrupt, uh, EDID management, uh, or sorry, EDID repair, and all of that is built directly into that piece. Uh, and so we've kind of combined it into our all-in-one. That's why it's the AIO. And it fixes a lot of problems. Now, specifically, it works with the CS IR kit CCUS in place of like a control system that would have a relay. And to this do, is a fun part. Yeah, to do the, the hot plug interrupt on the AIO. But this, of course, here is great because it learns IR commands into a relay, uh, which is a, a single so pole throw, dual throw. Yep. Single pole double throw relay built into this. It is code learning right yep. here on the, on the front of the unit. So you can use it with your existing control system, Control 4, Crestron, URC, RTI. Yep. And if you have a control system that has the standard mono mini output, yes. we have a cable called the CS-IRCC, yep. which IR connecting cable, yep. allows you to go from a mono jack to the stereo input jack on this for a simple, easy connection. Uh, also, don't forget, we have also just announced, uh, uh, thank you, Brandon, for the reminder on that. We've just launched our, our uh, Metra, uh, sorry, our AV Tech Tips Instagram. What is our, our uh, thing for that? It's at AV Tech Tips. And I'll make sure to write that here on the whiteboard when we go up to the top See, on that. See, I so. am totally unprepared for today's you are, show. Well, we're both kind of unprepared, but we're, we're going to run with it anyway. So, again, everybody, thank you for checking out the episode today. So now that we have all that wrapped up, let's actually get into what today's topic is about specifically. Talk so, to me. okay, today's episode is about cable and wire terminations, best practices. Terminations. Yes. So we just did a six-part series talking about basic networking uh, and, and talking about that. Now, 
the reality is, is we should have had an episode about the infrastructure of the network. Well, and we how important did. certain parts. Yeah, we kind of did, but the episode two kind of covered laying out and planning your. Yeah. But it really, other than saying termination is important. Yeah. We didn't discuss the best practices of termination. Of actually doing the termination, which is still honestly a fair amount of our phone calls. Yeah. It, 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 well, and especially spyclops and extenders. With extenders for sure. Now with spyclops, uh, because of uh, IP cameras uh, or basic networking systems, you, uh, all these practices we've developed because of HDMI extenders. However, if you use these best practices on your networks, you're going to find that they're going to work a lot better, and much better than they were before. And more reliable. Exactly. So. With that said, let's kind of, um, is that cable pinned out so that it can be used with the IR input on Sony TV? I, I, good question. Um, don't remember, to be honest with you. Now, the thing, the, the real thing is. There's two versions of that. Is that TV a 5 volt or a 12 volt IR? Well, no, no, it's a 12 volt IR, but see, here's the thing. Did they change Sony's the pinout? actually have had an S series and an A series control interface. Okay. And I honestly, I'll have to. Make that's a, a really good Sony question. Yeah, yeah. Call and check a pen out because I honestly don't know. Yeah. But that now that's a worthy question for the. Uh, so that I came. Like from, that was a good question. That that came from Richard Zuckerman. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for the question, Mr. Zuckerman. Mr. How Zuckerman. Are you, <laughs> Kimberly says hello. Yep. Uh, so um, yeah, really great question about that. Anyways, I uh, so. But I will check when we when we talk about terminations. One of the main things that we talk about is with HDMI extenders. But we learned why it's important for all of that. So I, I guess really the first question comes back down to, did I already hit the button for that one? I think I, I already know. did hit the button for that so. one. Let's see what this is. You're in charge here. of buttons. I am in charge of buttons. I just stand here and look darn pretty. Uh, sure. So the first question is, is what is a termination? Well, happy you asked that question because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's not where the train ends. Nope. 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 And just because you and I've had this discussion, we had a... Uh, a marketing girl a while back, yep. years ago. No names. No, no names. names. Going over our new products for the year, and Stuart had developed the new termination line, which is an excellent termination line. Yep. And was going over all this, and she looks him straight in the face and says, can we change the name? Stuart's looking at her and it's like, what do you mean? Well, terminations, it just sounds so death-like. <laughs> so a termination is obviously the end of the cable. Yes. And Or the end. Or the, or the Just end. Just the end. <laughs> or it could be the end of your job. Or <laughs> After that story, I could be unemployed. <laughs> Pink slip time. Pink slip time. But anytime it's something that goes in the end, whether it's an RJ45, mm -hmm. an RG6, a BNC, a crimp connector, a spade, it doesn't matter. Right. Anything that is semi-permanently attached to the end of the wire mm -hmm. is a termination. Yep. And by the way, anything that gets attached to the end of the wire is important. Yeah. And... And a side note, one of the things I learned years ago was that a proper pressure crimp or compression termination is better than a solder termination. How so? When How does you, that work? Well, and this was the question because we used to solder yeah. these terminals. Well, for, for like speaker cables, and it, for me, it, uh, in my mind, it makes sense to solder something so that it's, you, the problem with you the know solder, you've got it. it. You're dependent upon the flow okay. and the temperature and your skill set. Right. And let me rephrase this. Flow, temperature, and, and your skill set. Skills. Ah. And the problem with it is when you're putting two pieces of wire together, mm -hmm. speaker wire, solid cord, doesn't matter. The only thing holding those two wires together is the flow, is the solder. Right. And how good you are at heating it up and getting it to bond. When you do a pressure termination, whether it's an, an RG or, excuse me, a RJ. cat cable, yeah, cat cable. Is blue. Yep. Or an RG, or you're using a Klein type crimper yep. on a spade connector, when you're doing that pressure lock, yep. that pressure lock actually helps to bond the copper together closer. Yeah. So you get better conductivity and a more solid fit. Well, now in a in like an R, uh, an RJ45 connector, you're quite literally uh, pressing the teeth and penetrating into the copper yes, itself. Yes, you are. So you're getting copper on copper or copper in copper connection at that point, correct? Yes, you are. Okay. So in that case, then that would really give you a much better connection than, than the solder well. Huh. Interesting. And you know, even if you look at crimp caps, you mm -hmm. know, on, on the car side. Yeah. And I know you haven't done much car audio stuff. That you no. went straight yep. into our side from the yep. from the pro side. Yep, exactly. But if you did any car audio work, um, it's funny because Circa used to solder everything because that was, we solder. Well, yep. you know what? To be honest with you, a proper crimp cap done yep. right is yep. a much better termination for connectivity yeah. 
than soldering is. Now, granted, on the other side of that, it also may not be the best for reliability in a long term, especially in, a, in something that's shaking constantly. Well, if you do the proper job mm -hmm. with the proper setting on your client tool and the wires are properly inserted, you should never have a problem. Right. Solder can act because solder is simply the flow. You're hoping to get those wires together yep. with at some point a liquid flowing over them that's going to harden and cool. Yeah. You're hoping that's all going to stay together, but there can still be gaps in there. Right. Cold solder joints. Yeah. We've all dealt with those. Yeah, we run into those constantly. I mean, that's that's something that we see uh, major manufacturers. I mean, the Xbox 360 had that problem yeah. for the longest the, time. The, uh, double, uh, the blue ring of death. Yeah, was, the, the red, red ring of death. Yeah, yeah they, they the had that red problem. Ring, yeah. um, we have seen that that problem in in some of our stuff that we've we've released that we've had cold solder joints on that had mm -hmm. to be replaced. Now, the, now car, the old school car audio guys will remember when all the audio control products, as soon as you got their EQTs and their EQQs, you would open them up and re-solder every terminal. Because <laughs> they weren't soldered Because they weren't, you know, they just, they were built in the upper Northwest by what we assumed were people that weren't quite sober. Sure, okay. And we're gonna stay with that <laughs> one. We won't go too far into that one anymore, so. But compression joints, whether it's coax or category cable, is a much better way to do it, first off, and because it's a termination episode, let's kind of jump right into that with coax. Yeah. Coax is something we've all been doing for years. Mm -hmm. We've all done it and we all think we're great at it. Mm -hmm. We're not even gonna get started into Cat5 mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. And the thing about coax is again, in the early days, it was still solder. Yeah. We would take the braid, pull it back, slide the center pin in, solder it, and then, and then solder the braid to the outer edge. Right. That actually changed the impedance. And we all know how important that is today, especially yes. because of HDMI products. We've learned how important impedance well, is. Well, even in RF. Yeah. You know, any of the old school RF guys would tell you, you know, if you did not terminate right or you nicked the cable, you would lose like channel six and seven. Yeah. I mean, they would just disappear. Yeah. It's like two is great, nine is great. And I, I speak to local channels, but um, generally you would lose five, six, seven, maybe eight, or other channels, depending on how you nicked the cable, how much of the braid was nicked, or how poor of a job you did at twisting it to solder it. So just simply accidentally cutting something or nicking something in a certain aspect could change the frequencies oh, that were allowed through that, si that signal. So at that point then, now that we have compression fittings that actually give us more of a solid and, direct fit you to know, it. In, in the earlier days of the compression fittings, a lot of different things were tried. Mm -hmm. And you know, they had the, the octagon one. I'm gonna go to the board now. Yeah, right there. We had the, the hex crimp. Mm -hmm. which had the pressure points here, 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 and here. And if you ran out of tool, you would take a pair of pliers and crimp it down so you wound up with a termination to look kind of like that. Yeah, you get that weird oval, and, oval shape. And you've shape. seen those in oh, the field. Yeah. I promise you, you've seen them. Oh yes, I have seen those. Um, now, usually they're on they're on older uh, older uh, houses or systems yes. where where they're no longer, you know, uh, and they, 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 they were don't put in the like bandwidth. They yeah. fail early on. And this happened because in, a, in the early days, a lot of guys did not have the right tool. Right. And the early compression heads looked kind of like this, except you had an octagon in it. Mm -hmm. And all it did, because it had to press it down, is you didn't get flat. You would only get a little point. Yeah. Little tiny bits of contact. In the later 90s, Cable Pro, mm -hmm. ICM, came out with a conical compression tool which to us was revolutionary. Where it would do more of like a It like actually a compressed circular... it as a cone. Ah. Are we overhead? Nope, here, I'll give you overhead. There you go. So it would do it as a cone. So you actually were 360 degrees around the back. This helped to maintain the proper 75 ohm impedance. Gotcha. The tool is about this tall, weighed a ton, and was expensive. Right. But it worked, in, but you also had to use the right RJ's, RJ's on, because if you had it too thick of metal, mm -hmm. you would wind up crimping it over instead and of doing the nice conical, and that would affect the impedance. You kind of get like a like where it would fold in on itself a little right. bit or something? Just a little bit on the back end. Gotcha. And it did not work well on BNC's. Mm -hmm. So it took a few years for them to get all that figured out. Now we're down to compression style. And with compression style, what you've got is not an exterior force, but a front to back force. Exactly. And what's really nice about that, it's like a plumbing sleeve. Yeah. And really, it's a, so what you have is you'll have the centerpiece, 
that it have a slight cone to it. That the center pin goes into, and the braid and the foil go over the outside. So this will go, and then you got the black jacket. And then there's another piece on the back behind that. So when these two are pushed together, this forces down over this to make a 360 degree tight compression on it. So you're doing this to it as it goes in all the way around. So you get an even compression to maintain the 75 ohms. Right. That's why when you look at any system done today, even by a not fully experienced integrator, as long as he used the correct tools and terminations, yep. it is superior to anything done by even the best guys in the late 80s and early 90s when we did not have yeah. the quality of termination and the quality of tools that we have now. So Brent, talk about when you run into a, a Talk about the differences that you're going to see with a good and a bad termination. So you, you have a good termination. Let, let, let's keep with uh, with not maybe, maybe not BNC, but let's do F connector. Okay. Uh, and we're talking about just cable service at that point or satellite service. Well, the what first do you see? thing to look at is the cable prep. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take again an, an RG6. And when you look at the cable, this, by the way, is the braid. And we're going to assume the foil's under that. I'm just not that sure, good of an artist. Yeah. And then the stinger. Now, where's your dielectric? This is the dielectric here. Ah, gotcha. Okay. This is the dielectric. Then you're going to have the overall jacket. That's so, what I'm looking for. When you're stripping this with your proper stripping tool. There you go. It is going to do this part for you. It's going to take the dielectric off the stinger. Mm -hmm. And it will take the black plastic sleeve off the braid and the dielectric. Now... A problem that a lot of guys get is nobody thinks of this as a maintenance tool. Yes. This is a maintenance tool. You have to replace this tool. Oh, there we go. There you go. On a fairly regular basis. It's just like an oil filter or brakes in your car. Well, let's let's actually let's take a minute and actually talk about this tool and, and what's going on. So when you've got uh, one of these stripper tools, and, and you're, you're okay, I'm, I'm, okay. we're, we're going to do it here. When you're using one of these stripper tools, these are just razor blades. So think about it like this. When you go, you know, uh, for, for the guys that, that shave their face and, and you know, for, for whoever else is shaving, you know, their, their legs or whatever, it's like your Please razor blade for that. Not. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> this is just fully sideways, didn't it? Uh, let's back up here for a second, gentlemen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, got me on that one. Okay, so... I work hard at it. Yes. When, when you're using these, these have blades in them, and that's what's actually doing, of course, the cutting aspect to it. But the thing is, is that these are dealing with metal. And they get right? dull. And they get dull. And so if, if you were to take your razor blade uh, that, that you use for shaving at, at your house and you were to just run it across something metal over and over and over and over and over again, eventually you go to you know shave your face and you're going to, well, you're going to cut yourself anyways doing that because you're going to you know screw up the razor blade. But it's not going to work right. It's, it's not going to you know make the connections for it. So this device here, this tool is something that should be replaced periodically. This isn't It's a something, transient device. Yeah, this, this should be something. Now you can get ones uh, like ours where you can, you can unscrew the, the blades and and put them in, but honestly, it's such a At cheap... the cost? Just yeah, buy new ones. Just, in fact, just buy new ones. Look, never have just one in your kit. First off, if you lose it, you're in deep trouble on the job side. Yeah. Secondly, when they go bad, they don't go bad and they, oh, I can tell it's going bad. It's just suddenly it's not working. Well, it, a lot, sometimes it even just breaks the, the, the metal yep. inside of it. You, you so can have a shattered piece in there. These are inexpensive enough. Mm -hmm. Have backups. Yeah. Yeah, definitely so have backups. Let's assume that this is in reasonably good condition. You have stripped your cable back and you have met the proper dimensions for your stripping because you use the tool which has all the guides built into it. And don't forget, clean your tool. Yes. So you've done this. You've got your stinger, your dielectric, your braid, your foil, and your adder shield. When the first thing you do before you slide this terminal over that is you want to make sure that none of those little copper strands got wrapped around the stinger. And if this is not brand new, there's a good chance one of those copper strands got wrapped around the stinger. This kills a lot of guys, because even if it's not touching, if it's just overlapped a little bit, we're going to do a head on. And there's the stinger. Even if one of those cables is just laid over the top mm -hmm. a little bit, that can arc under high dynamic ranges. Yes. 
and that will show up itself in a variety of ways. White flashes mm -hmm. or shorts. Now, when you say high dynamic ranges, we do not mean necessarily HDR. No, but tele, just you know, when, when you're video. looking at video. Mm -hmm. If it's a high motion image, something going on, bright colors, Something's changes. Change, a lot of new information yes. is happening at once. It will, it will arc across there. Yeah. We'll get to that again under speaker wire. Ah, see? So, <laughs> no, continue. This can arc across, and when it does, weird things will happen in your video, and if it happens long enough, yep. you can damage your gear. Yeah. So the first thing you want to do is a visual inspection. And for those of us that are older, this means glasses or your cell phone and camera mode and magnifier. Yeah. This is an incredible tool to use for that. So check this. Make sure you don't have any little cuppers hanging over. Well, and this is also one of the reasons why you should have extra length of cable in oh, your yeah. runs. Go ahead and give yourself two extra feet because the uh, the fact of the matter is, is even during just the initial installation, you may need to use that extra two feet or part of that two feet, but also after the fact. So five years down the road, the customer needs to upgrade something or something needs to change. Guess what? You still have a foot and a half left over from when yeah, you were doing termination. Yeah, it's always good to have a service loop just in case somebody comes behind you and yeah. cuts all your wires short. Uh, so let's see. So we've got... Uh, uh, FWT has two comments for us. He says, that's an unfortunate problem. 90% of the text uh, I see cannot crimp or solder correctly. Um, unfortunately, that's uh, that can be a true <laughs> Welcome statement. Welcome to tech support. Yeah, um, uh, and it's really unfortunate as well. We uh, un we get the comment, uh, I've been doing this for 20 years. We get and that, we'll get to that in Cat 5. We get that too detail. often. We'll, we'll talk about that as well. But um, it, it is a real thing. It's unfortunate. But luckily, the people who are doing it the right way, it keeps you in business. So keep that in mind. Now, a lot of this has to do with your tool. Tools are very important in termination. Oh, are we not? Are we talking about actual tools? I thought we yes. were talking about you. I am a tool, but well, no, okay, the tool. Okay, gotcha, tool. gotcha. Okay, just make sure. Just because it comes out of the box and things kind of work mm -hmm. does not mean it's set. Do not show up on the job site with a brand new tool you have not calibrated for your brand of terminals. Yeah. Because you want to make sure that you get a full compression. Um, can you give me an overhead? I sure can. When you're looking at this black, this is what compresses. You don't want to see but a very thin layer of that material left under compression because that is how you get the tight fit. Now, your previous question was, how do you know a good termination from a bad termination? And, and while you're getting into that real quick, um, uh, FWT is saying, apply a piece of sticky back Velcro to the tool to, to assist with combing the braid. I've I never, have not tried I've never that. done that. That's kind of an interesting um, way to do it, I guess. Would you uh, please send us a photo of, of how you, how and what you're doing with that? So he's taking the, the the hook part of it and and taping it or sticking it to the side of the tool, and then he's using that to kind of like catch the the, the edge of the the actual uh, of it and, and pull it out and away from it. Is what it sounds like, anyways. That would be uh, really cool. Send us a picture of it. Send us a picture on yeah. video. Yeah. And because I have not thought to do that, but actually, really great opportunity for this. Uh, if you and this puts are you on, in the running for. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, it, uh, of course, that, that new Instagram that, that we're putting out uh, at AV Tech Tips. Uh, this is that's if you're on Instagram, that's a really great way to get that information over to us. Uh, or you can email it to myself, Adam R at Metro AV. Uh, sorry, MetroHomeTheater.com, which that will be changing soon as well. Or you can send it over to Brent at BrentM at MetroHomeTheater.com as well. Um, now, also, we've got a comment from the experts. They're saying, even if the dielectric isn't fully seated, you will have signal degradation. Sure. Yeah, so we, you really need to because have... Because that changes the impedance. It does. You really need to have that, that dielectric go see, all the way up to the base of the inside of we're ahead of where we are. Yeah, so go ahead. Continue on. So, we want to make sure that the dielectric is fully clean, no strands hanging over. The stinger has got to be clean. And when you're using your tool, don't make it so tight that when you're cutting into it, it actually cuts a ridge into the stinger. Because when you cut that ridge, that also affects impedance. Well, you just lost a couple channels if you do something it's incorrect. It's possible. Well, uh, today, and maybe not as badly, but before, you know, before, and for sure. In the analog days, is big yeah. time. But do not nick this cable, particularly if it's copper-clad steel. Yes. Because the copper on the surface is the conductivity, the steel really isn't. Yeah, the steel's just so, there for structure. We've done our basics. We've made sure that we've got no strands. We've made sure this is set so it's not digging into the copper. And this is where the magnifying feature of your phone comes in. So now we've got this. We take the terminal and we slide it on. Now, as this is going in, you've got the barrel and you can see the stinger coming out. You want to make sure that the dielectric is flush with the top of that barrel. Because if it's not flush, if it's pulled back just a little bit, 
that changes because that barrel length helps determine impedance. Mm -hmm. And if that barrel length is not correct around that cable, your impedance will change. And when impedance changes, particularly in digital signal now, even more so than in analog days, mm -hmm. you can have degradation or signal loss. So make sure all that's on there. So now we have got our cable properly stripped. We've cleaned our stinger. We haven't cut this. We have slid the terminal on. We now have our tool and we're back to what I previously said. Calibrate this before you go to the job site for the first time. Because out of the package, it's probably not going to be right for your brand, your wire, your terminals, and your work ethic. I didn't say that, did I? Uh, moving on. Yeah. <clears throat> so when you compress it, make sure it's fully down. Now, the difference between a good termination and a bad termination. Yep. You don't. You want to make sure, A, this is right, so this is fully seated in there. And a good way to test this before you go to the job site is find an old VCR or old cable box or something, terminate a wire, grab it with your hand, and yank on it. If it's done right, that terminal is not pulling off the cable. You may pull the terminal out of the cable box, mm -hmm. but you're not going to pull the terminal off the cable. That is a properly terminated cable. If it moves at all, you haven't done a proper seating and the compression's not working against the entire length of the dielectric and the outer jacket. Yep. Um, uh, FWT responded back. They said, ding, 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 you are correct. Plus it prevents a ton of pokes. So he was talking about me when I was talking about how, how he uses that, uh, the Velcro. Um, oh, okay. So, uh, he, he, Please send photos. Yeah, it still sends photos. That, that, that would be great to see so we can see how that works. Um, and then of course, Leo. Hey, Leo, it's great to hear from you. Uh, thank you for the comment as well. Um, uh, so we're always looking at that. So. Now, when we look at we haven't even got to BNCs, which are a little tougher. BNCs are different because, of course, they've got the stinger on the end right. of it that has to be uh, connected and to it. Did I'm I not a big fan of the one-piece ones. Yeah, uh, where, where they kind of hold it in place yeah. in there with, with, uh, with yeah, the, the pressure a little bit. Yeah, I prefer to have this, the um, center pin slide over the copper before you insert it into the... Yes, yes. I just... Because you it's more accurate that way and you get a full insertion. How far are you inserting? I mean, you, you went really far with that insertion. I'm, I mean, you just... Moving on. Uh, anyways, so... And it wasn't even me that went I there. Just, I'm just, it has been a rough week I for have, you, I can tell. I have been working with you for over two years now. You've, you're, you're beginning to, to rub off on me a little bit here. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, just based on that, I'm stepping uh, back. Okay, so when we talk about category wire, uh, sorry, that we, we talked about uh, RG6, and that's the RG59. RG59, and even bigger, we go into RG11 uh, with the, the, the longer runs, or if you're mm -hmm. working inside of or a- Or if you're a CB or a ham guy, RG58. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, now the that- The were, were solder for years because it was a stranded center conductor. Right. Hated those. Well, now those also didn't, don't those carry a lot more current uh, than- They can because guys that are putting linears on them. Right. I, you can put a thousand watts on those things. I, I've heard stories of guys pulling up underneath of a tree to sit in the shade and lighting the tree on fire with the antenna because they've been they, they were sitting too close to it. Uh, Leo says he hates doing the RCA connectors. You and me both, brother. Um, <laughs> so and those were all solder in the early days too. So that's Ooh. that's RG59 or just RG in general, RG right? In general. Okay. So let's go ahead and jump over to the next most common cable that we are wired that gets and terminated. And the number one call on tech support. Yes, it is. So that would be Cat5. Yeah, Cat5, Cat5 Cat6, Cat6, Cat6A. Cat6A. Um, and the new potentials for the, the, the other sizes and types and whatnot yeah. as well, but category wire. So when we look at category wire, um, it's still a very similar concept for the RG59 or RG6 in the fact that we have to make sure that the termination is solid. We're not, you know, fast and quick and getting it done and getting it out there while important uh, as that is, because of course, the quicker you do the job, the more, you know, you're the more efficient you are. Yeah, but it's much better to spend five minutes on the front end than two hours on the back end. Exactly. Go ahead and take the extra time and do the termination correctly. So when we talk about correctly, let's go ahead and talk about best practices for terminating RJ45 or RJ45, pardon me. And RJ45. And RJ45. So, Brent, okay. I'll pass it back to you. How about okay. that? Step back, because I'm stepping into the, into the center here. Oh boy, again. I'm gonna clean up a little bit here. RJ45, when you're my age, is actually a new termination. Yeah. I mean, it really yeah. is from the mid 90s on up. Well, Before, what about like RJ11 and, and RJ, what is it, seven? Yeah, we had the, the phone jacks, and the four right. pin, the six pin, the eight pin. But really, in the early days, it was lower bandwidth. 
And it's not uncommon for us to get the call, particularly on a extender, non HD base T extender, more more often than the, than the other ones, mm -hmm. where, sir, we need you to check your termination. Well, no, I've been terminating for 25 years. Yes, sir. I'm sure you have. And you've been doing network for 25 years. Our phone, phone was analog or early digital, and networking's redundant data. What I mean by that is your PC or the printer will keep trying, did you get, did you get, did you get, did you get, did you get? HDMI doesn't do that. HDMI is real time data. It either gets there or it doesn't. And if enough fails, you're out, you're, it shuts down and it doesn't work, at which point you call us and say, your piece is broke. So it's the same, it's the same idea as if, if you were talking to somebody and uh, you heard the first part of whatever they're saying, but then they mumbled the rest of it. Right. You would say, what was that again? Come right. again? Say I mean, it again? Yes. Which being old and semi deaf, I do often with you. Yeah, yeah. So, let's look at an RJ45 terminal. And by the way, we sell a variety of these at a very competitive price, not because I want to be in the terminal business, but because we want to sell a terminal that's simple and easy for you guys to use that is correct in its application. It also works, make sure that you're getting, you know, a good uh, termination for HDMI and everything else that we, yep. that we do with it. So, so, this is my out of proportion RJ45 with the clip on the back. Now there are going to be eight tubes in here of which I will not be able to properly do. And inside of each of these eight tubes <laughs> is, you're enjoying this, aren't you? I am. We, we got a good comment. Okay. <laughs> Who is commenting on my artwork? Uh, no, it's not your artwork this okay. time around. Leo is saying Brent is used to Morse code. Smoke signals. Smoke signals, Leo. He's in, Brent's used to smoke signals. <laughs> Read that, Leo. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you slide the wire in here, whichever color code you choose to use, 568A or 568B, but pick one. Don't just throw general colors in there, which we've gotten that call too. Yep. Does it matter? Yeah. Well, now hold on, Brent. What if I have the same color layout on one side as the other side? Does it, it does, yes, it does matter. It does matter. It does matter, and here's why it matters. Sure. Because the way the twist ratios work on that in 568A and 568B, all that really changes is the orange and green, which are essentially the same twist ratio. So other than the color, the wire pairs are basically the same. And there's impedance, inductance, and channel noise rejection built into that design. Right. So when you slide your wires in here, whichever color code you select, and by the way, we have taken calls where it was A on one side and B on the other, that does not work. Which, what is that called, Brent? Um, oh, 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 a null. A null cable. A null cable. Yeah. Or a, or a switch cable or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. A couple, yeah, couple different do types. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. So you slide your wires all the way in. Now, when you're looking at that terminal, on the head end of it, you're going to see eight copper dots. You should see eight copper dots. And unlike my drawing, mm -hmm. they should be in a straight line all the way across. Here's what you're looking at. If any one of those, and actually my drawing turns out to be reasonably accurate. It's fairly here. close, yeah. If any one of my draw, if any one of your copper dots is not in the exact straight line with the other ones, your blades are not fully entering. And then the blades, there's eight blades in the top of the RJ45 that are pressed down into the cable by your compression tool. Now, the die set in your compression tool, which is right in there, has eight devices in it that press down into these blades. The die sets a lot like tread on your tire. It does not wear evenly. And when this happens, one or more of the copper dots will be higher or lower than the other copper dots. So right there, you know your die set needs to be replaced on your tool. And that's very critical because penetration and that copper dot being forced around is based on the penetration determines bandwidth. Now, you also want to look for eight shiny copper dots because you have already cut the wire and we're going to get to prep on that and Adam's going to go over that in a minute mm -hmm. just because I want to make him work today and he's yep. tired. Yep. When you're looking at that head on, you want to see the eight copper dots. And when you see eight shiny copper dots are in the same link, that means that all the wires are at the end of the terminal, which is proper for bandwidth and timing, and you've got proper penetration from the blades into the copper. 
Now, we are not a fan of the pass-through type of terminal because typically you've got a cutting blade on one side. When you press it down, if that blade's not replaced on a regular basis, it's not going to be sharp enough to evenly cut the wire, so it kind of draws on it. And for us older guys, we'll remember the first introduction to twin blade razors, where the commercial was the first, first blade pulls the whisker out, the second one cuts it, because what it's doing is it's drawing on it to stretch it. And when that happens, it actually thins the copper out in here, which means you're going to lose bandwidth. And that's the last thing we can deal with in HDMI is bandwidth loss. So make sure all eight wires are fully inserted. And by the way, do a visual, hold your wire, spin it around, looking at the RJ45, making sure that all eight conductors are fully inserted. Number one, number eight, number three, and number six are the most common fail points. That's the two outside ones and the split pair. Split pair is a big common failure because the blue tends to get pulled back unless you fully insert it. And even as you're compressing, it will want to pull back. So make sure all that's done correctly or you will suffer in bandwidth. Now, before we even get to this point, wire prep is very, very critical. And what tools you use is very critical on this. So I'm going to step away and let Adam work for a minute just because sure. I'm that kind of guy sure, today. Sure, that'll work. So, Adam, tell me about prepping for Cat5, Cat6 terminations. So, Brent... Uh, we kind of commented last time about how, you know, the reason that our, our sign-off statement is what it is and why there's so many things to it, it's because we've learned our lessons uh, and, and how, you know, what to do and what not to do and everything else. So um, I was a firm believer and still kind of am a believer, but not, maybe not as firm before, that a pair of uh, side cutters are perfectly fine when you want to, after you lay out your eight, uh, or your four, your four twisted pair. However, the truth is, it's not. The thing is that happens with these. Can, can I that, slap you now and just get it over with? Sure. So, well, no. But so um, the the problem that you run into with side cutters is that they're not cutting; they're actually pressing. And so, if anybody has ever done anything with uh, with metal uh, fabrication or anything like that, when you have certain tools that that do like the large presses and whatnot that do break those for you, what those are doing, the reason that, that you wind up with a problem is that they are pressing it, and so you don't get a clean effect on it. Instead, you, you wind up a nice with a, a, a thing, uh, an end on that. Yeah, yeah, of course. In fact, I'll let you, I'm going to go ahead and give you an overhead. Ah, thank you. So give me a drawing of what happens to the cable. So when you feed the cable in, or sorry, when, when you use the, the, the side cutters to cut the cable, and this is just a single strand of, of the eight strands, uh, what you wind up with is not a flat surface like that, like you're supposed to get. Instead, what you wind up with is something more along the lines of that you get a little bit of a point here on the end of it. Now, the problem with that point is it's the same idea with eddies and flows of, of water, right? Am I going along the, the right I'm, direction? I'm enjoying do, this. Do you like where I'm going with it, my, my explanations? So the reason that you run into problem is that when, when the eddies and flows of, of the electricity get to the point here at the end of it, what they're doing is they're actually creating a lot of effect and problem at that level. Uh, so the same idea where if you were taking uh, take a, a water hose and put your thumb on the end of the water hose, what you're doing is you're bringing the water to a point and it shoots out the end of it and you get a bunch of mess. Whereas instead, if you were just going to leave it leave it alone uh, and leave it flat out the at the edge of it, it's going to come out nice and smooth. You get kind of like a laminar flow out of it in certain uh, circumstances. I like that laminar flow. Yeah. Isn't that fun, right? But wait, yeah. let me throw one more at you. Yeah. What happens when they use a set of side cutters? Because uh, a lot of guys do. Well, that, in fact, but, side cutters yeah. are built into. A lot of these. So what happens with the side cutters is that you get that that effect here. Actually, where it's, it's where worse. It's pulling that. Okay. You want? Yeah, I do. There you go. Because with the side cutters, what you wind up with is that. Ah, see. And that's even worse. Yeah. So, what the, do we recommend you use? Uh, just a pair of scissors. Um, it'd be best. You keep hitting buttons, and I keep fixing. Yes, it. I'm, I'm driving you crazy. Yep. There we go. No more buttons. My buttons. But, but. <laughs> <laughs> I got him. I got the I don't control. Have buttons. You shouldn't have buttons. Uh, so when you are when you are you you know cutting the wires, look the way that I do it is I will run the wire. I will cut it to length and get everything ready with side cutters because these are just easier and safer to walk around with than a pair of scissors. Uh, when you're climbing through the rafters, you're up on a ladder. This is if this you know if you fall on this or if you you know do something with this, you're not as in much danger. You're still in danger. Be mindful. But you're not anywhere near as much danger as if it's a pair of scissors. So I will use this to cut everything down to the lengths that You've I want to use. You've obviously watched me in the shop. 
I can't uh, cut anything without bleeding. So yes, and and even si yeah, especially scissors. You have a, a bad history with scissors. Um, so instead, then when you're going to do the trim out, that's where I bring in the scissors. Now the scissors, what you get with scissors is an actual cleaving effect on the wire. And I wonder if my art style is going to be good enough for this. See if I can show what happens uh, when you do that. So you get the wire in, and when you get a, a scissor effect, the wire gets channeled into the the edge of it there and so what happens then instead is you get a nice clean effect because you're having a cutting action from both sides and it's sharp and it's, it's not sharp. blunt and so you get a nice uh, effect with that now the the other thing is is that if you take a, a knife and you were to t um actually this is a really good example if you take a knife and you you know you got a, a nice awesome you know wagyu steak we were actually just talking about wagyu steaks earlier today which now i'm I have something to save up for, right? It's different than mine if you're eating Wago. So uh, what happens with those is that if you take a steak knife and just push straight down on the steak without any kind of movement, well, with enough force, eventually you're going to get through the steak. However, the steak's going to wind up looking like that, what Brent drew earlier, where you get kind of like a weird effect like that uh, on the edge of the steak. Now, instead, if you take the knife and you give it a forward and back motion, like you're sawing it, instead you get a nice flat surface for it. And so it's going to work the way that it's supposed to. And you get a nice cleave on the end of it. Now I keep saying cleave. Do you know why I keep saying cleave? Because we're going to go to fiber soon. Eventually. Uh, we won't get too far into fiber because that's an entire episode all on its own, basically. So we won't get too far into that, but the cleaving effect here on, on fiber and how important the uh, flat surface is on the edge of that fiber is as important as it is on copper as well. You should still have a nice flat surface on that. So really, really important. Good stuff to follow along. Good, good practices with that. So now here's the thing. If oh, you follow, yes, just a regular pair of, of, uh, of, you know, office scissors honestly that's all you really need yeah, you can $2 go at Lowe's or Home Depot generally black and uh, red and a big bin at the end of the aisle yeah and honestly you can pick these up for you know relatively cheap they don't have to be like a precision set of, of, of scissors no just a good pair of office scissors will work perfectly fine in those applications so now let's talk a little bit more about prepping when you are when you strip this back... Now, is this for nuclear fallout prepping? Are we talking about zombie apocalypse prepping? Zombie apocalypse. Okay. By the way, evidently, there's a CDC guideline now. There is, and there's been for a couple of years now, so it's, it's a fantastic Which, read if you get a chance. And then, you know, now, just because I know it exists, yeah. I'm going to have to. Yeah. So, when you are prepping, and essentially the same thing with this, but strip a little extra back out of here, because God only knows what happened down here when you did your cut and you were in a, hush, in a rush with your dikes or your side cutters. So you want to make sure you have enough to, to get rid of that. So you strip this back, lay your wires out, break them apart, get your collar code separated. I like to run it so that it's between my, my knuckle is at the base of where my wire split is. And then it goes out and then I trim it at the end of my thumb because that, for me at least, is perfect for an RJ45. Yeah. yeah that... And it fits right in. You make sure it goes all the way in. The, 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 the outside cladding has got to go under the knuckle. Because if you don't, you don't have proper strain relief inside the terminal unless this is pressed down on the knuckle for the compression. Here's a really good question. Uh, this comes from the experts. If the compression comes from the top of the connector, why does the end of the wire matter? Are we talking... RJ45. So when, when, when you're looking at, at where, where, it, uh, where the actual termination goes into... Uh, the wire, it's not at the end of the wire, it's its a few millimeters or mi you know, micrometers away from the edge of the, not, of the wire. I'm, I'm honestly not understanding the question. So, so. When, so here, take like this here, this okay. is the, the, this is it here for the, uh, for the, for, you know, when you go to terminate it, okay. the teeth wind up back here, not on the end because of the wire. Because the, the, the distance between the teeth and the end also adds to the inductance of the cable. Exactly. Really I, good question. I, I was not, I'm sorry to not understand the question, but yeah. yes. Yeah. This is all about timing, because if it's not the same distance, yeah. it will affect timing. And networking, not so much. Mm -hmm. HDMI, non HD base T, mm -hmm. absolutely it'll kill you. Yeah, yeah. HD really, base T builds a lot of redundancy into protecting. Really that. good question, because it, it's, it's the same idea when it comes behind. Um, actually, the best way to describe this is with musical instruments. Um, when you have a, uh, a recorder or a flute or you know whatever else, you know, a wind instrument or any kind of wind instrument actually, if you even though the wind or the or, or the vibration isn't happening on the thing that's all the way out at the very edge of the instrument, 
the edge of that piece of the instrument changes the tune or the, the tone, harmonics. the harmonics of that instrument. It's the same idea when you, when you have the ends of these cables. Because they're like still that. vibrations. Yes, very much so. Yeah. And they're not always good vibrations. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Leo is saying the reason I have carpal tunnel is, the, is for making hundreds of thousands of these ends. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is why I was not going to terminate anything today. Well, which is also why, uh, honestly, it's why a lot of brands come out with that style of termination where you feed it through. through. It's not, here's the thing. When it comes to regular networking, it's not a bad connector. It's just, it, it, it allows too many problems to be, to, to enter the system. The tool becomes so much more critical on that termination. Yeah. yeah you really need a to standard RJ45. You really need to replace the, the, the die on and those tools side. within a hundred terminations, <laughs> at okay. least. Uh, I uh, go at, 100, at, but... at maximum anyway. So uh, Leo's also saying he uses Telco snips for everything. And that's the Telco scissors. The tel Telco scissors? Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, generally, the Telco guys have that little brown leather pouch. Yep. They got the short scissors in them with the hook in them. Yep. Cool. Okay. So, let's see. Brent, what about... So, we already talked about that. Let will put this back on here. Integrity is very important for RJ45s, guys. And when you get up to the 6As, there's now a multi-piece terminal. Mm-hmm that actually we sell that's that's awesome for the uh, six a's so brent we are running out of time oh um, what's next week uh, next week uh is we are talking about uh, i believe it's the differences between wi-fi zigbee and z-wave no i thought that was the week after maybe it's the week after i don't, I don't remember what the next week's episode is do you know what the next week's episode is or have you uh <laughs> we're putting us all on the spot ah! so we'll find out for you but anyway so the uh oh here we go if you have a problem with RJ45, crimp it again tighter. Always use a ratcheting crimper. If it still doesn't work, cut it off and do it again with a new connector. Um, you are getting crimper to is, is the, awesome. You are getting to the next part of, of uh, the, the last question that I have in all of this, uh, which is, um, Brent, how do we troubleshoot terminations? Um, well, the first thing we do, right? honestly, is do not believe your uh, fluke meter or whatever it is that you're, everybody said, I got the meter, I checked it, it's great. Well, that's, all that's doing is checking connectivity. Yeah, continuity. That's not, yeah, continuity, excuse yeah. me, and thank you. Yeah. It's not bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Continuity is by no stretch of the imagination a bandwidth. Correct. As we both know, quality bandwidth testers very are expensive. not cheap. Yeah, now you can pick them up. They're, they're coming down in price. Um, uh, hey, Dale, thank you for the comment. Um, so they, they are coming down in, in cost and price for those tools, but the good ones that, that, are, that actually give you the right information are definitely still expensive. I mean, well, you're spending can, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars uh, well, on those. I can tell you potentially that, the, thousands. that the one we did for the Cat 6A for testing cables yeah. was $15,000. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, loved Leo. Like, I love that one. Leo, uh, Leo says, the differences between Wi-Fi, Zigbee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, and RF, uh, 3.31 at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, so actually, that's not the next one. So we have, uh, there's one more in between there. We have the 24th. Uh, as well. So there's one on the 24th. We don't have to find it again. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, he tells me five minutes before the show what I'm doing. Uh, there we go. Uh, FWT says, gentlemen, as usual, I love getting the comedy club and a Sunday service and in, uh, an info-packed hour. Uh, well, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. More uh, importantly, don't forget your comments because we are giving away yep. the AIO and the CS-IR kit CCUS and because I love the CS-CCIRUS. Yep. I designed it. Yep. Uh, now, when we, we talk use about a lot of TV lifts, screens, motorized curtains, you're giving away all the answers for the questions. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, anyways, when we're talking about how to troubleshoot terminations, uh, use the, the the different tools that are out there that that will check different things and, and the, check continuity honestly, and the check first all the thing other we're things. We're going to do is we're going to ask for visual inspection. Yeah, do a visual inspection. Take a look at it. Like Brent's been saying all along, when you look at the RJ45, look at the end of it. Do you see eight shiny copper dots that are even uh, all the way across? If it's an R, uh, if it's a uh, Cat6, you're going to see you know, zigzaggy. zigzaggy. But they should be in two flat lines. Yeah, two flat lines all, uh, two flat lines all the way across. Now, honestly, when you troubleshoot ends, there's not a whole lot that you can do. and uh, Outside of visual. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, Randall uh, made a really good point. He said, you know, re crimp it again tighter. You can do that. That's really one, uh, one good way of doing it. But usually by the point that you've done that, uh, you're, you're already, something else is already causing and the problem. And it's quite possible your die set's bad in your, turn, in your compression tool. Yeah. And just doing that again yeah. will not change that. Now, a couple of things. When you call us up, when we get the tech call, 
for an extender or a network issue, we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about your termination. Mm -hmm. We're not saying you don't know what you're doing. We're going to meet the phone and talk about their termination. Yes, not their, <laughs> not their lack of employment in the future. Of course, this job, you know, that could lead to there, but... Just kidding, we don't do that. As far as you know. So we're going to, it's not that we don't think you're doing the job right, but we have to have a common place to start. Yes. So it's like, okay, let's look at your termination. Well, I've been doing this for 25 years. Yes, sir. We know that. Mm -hmm. But we do it on a regular basis, too, and we still mess up. Mm -hmm. So let's just go through some, some things. Hold the wire up. We're going to ask you to spin it and look at all eight conductors. We may ask you to send us photos. Yeah, make sure they're in focus and yeah, we can actually yeah. see it. Um, you should be able to see the, the image before you send it to us. Uh, take a picture of it and make sure it's in focus uh, and then send it to us. Um, don't uh, just indiscriminately cut terminals off because you don't know which one's bad and you start running out of wire. Now, oh, and on that note. Oh, that's what I was going to do. I was just going to tell them to chop it off. Don't just chop it off. <laughs> First, do a visual inspection before you do anything, because in a lot of cases, you don't have a lot of spare wire. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when you've already done at least one, maybe two terminations, and you're not making progress, stop. Yep. Step away. Mm -hmm. I can tell you, without any question, by the time you're there, you're agitated, your life's going to suck, and you're probably going to make more mistakes than you already have. Right. Step away, go clean, go look at your programming, go to lunch, have a drink or five. Then go back with the relaxed mind. Because as that wire gets shorter and shorter, you start to panic. Right. And panicking is not the place to be when you're doing termination. Yep. No, definitely not. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a very golfing mentality. The more yes, frustrated you are, Zen. the worse it's going to get. It's uh, all about Zen. So, and last but not least, and of course. And that should have been the title of the show. Uh, the Zen of Termination. The Zen of Termination. That should have been it. Um, last but not least, uh, chop off the end, put a new end on it, and try again. But look at them first. Yeah. Yeah. Find and out what went wrong first and see if you can you fix know, it. Look, a continuity tester, a basic network tester, should be in everybody's kit just to make sure you've at least got mm -hmm. the right wires in the right place. Yeah. Yeah. Because that happens, too, in the calls we get. Yep. So I think that's all the time that we have for today. A um, lot of really good information. We are already at 55 minutes for wow. the show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, gosh so darn it. Everybody, thank you so much for checking and in with us thanks today. Thanks for the comments. And yeah. thanks to last week's winner, which was... Faytonia. Faytonia on yep. the uh, Spyclops 4 camera, 16 camera potential in, the, in VR kit. Yep. And of course, uh, leave your comments on today's episode, either over in the chat uh, if you're here live still, uh, or you can leave them down in the comment section below if you're catching this after the fact. Um, but please do that and enter for a chance to win uh, the AIO2. Uh, don't forget also... And the CS-IO um, CCUS. AV, uh, sorry, at AV Tech Tips on Instagram is our new handle over there. Uh, so let's see if I do my at pretty well. That's a pretty good at. I did a really good job That's a very that. good at. Uh, AV Tech tips find us on instagram i uh, uh for that as well and also the, um, that's a really the paper in front uh, of you right there for a second i don't think you want to see that Andrew. there you go so at av tech tips uh is the uh address for that um uh, or you can find us on instagram there it's also another avenue for you guys out in the field uh who are doing stuff to get to us uh with questions and comments and stuff about things and send us your photos yeah we would love to see those uh maybe put a hashtag on there hashtag av tech tips uh, or something like that, maybe? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Nope, you're good. Hashtag AV Tech Tips. Hashtag AV Tech Tips. We'll monitor that and see, uh, see things on that. Maybe we'll do a giveaway on one of those at some point, but we'll see. So, everybody, again, thank you so much for checking out the video with us today. We've really enjoyed being here with you. We've hoped you enjoyed everything we gave, uh, all the information we've given out today as well. Don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends, your neighbors. Yep. Uh, send money. Come back uh, next week at 3 p.m. where we will talk about, thank you, Leo, for this, uh, it's how to split an HDMI cable. Oh, well, you know, it's funny because you and I talked about we this and we're making jokes about it earlier. We did, yep. Uh, generally, you want to get them apart, say bad things yep. about the other one, and they just kind of go their separate ways. Yeah. Now, I will say, uh, definitely come into that episode. Make it a really good episode for us because March 24th is my birthday. Is, is, and that's next Wednesday. And 30? Uh, I'll be 31. Why are you, you are guilting people into watching? I'm heck yeah, I am. Hey, we're I, not I'm, proud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay we it up there. We are not thick. proud. Ah, <laughs> uh, speaker cable termination. Oh, okay. Uh, you got, you got.
Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. Two minutes. Speaker cable termination. Guys, don't bank on solder. Do a very tight twist going into a BNC. And I would encourage you to tighten that up with a pair of pliers. A BNC? Uh, I'm sorry, a banana. Banana, okay. Banana. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Use a pair of pliers to get it as tight as you can because the tighter the pressure, the better the termination. And do not, please do not allow any little stray strands. I had a customer call me up one day that every time his TiVo went bong, yep. his amplifier shut off. Yep. And it took a while to trace it down. It's this one tiny little strand that was hanging out that under that bong yep. arced over to the other terminal and was enough to short it out. Yep, exactly. So there you go. Thank you, Jay Nelson, uh, for the comment about reminding us to talk about speaker wire. So we really appreciate that. Again, everybody. 12 gauge, 12 gauge, 12 gauge. For the really good systems, do, do 12, gauge 12 gauge or, or higher. Or 16.4, doubled up. Yeah. Or 14.4, doubled up. Yeah, exactly. So everybody, thank you so much for checking in with us. I'm Brent. I'm Adam, as always. Uh, bad, 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 reboot bad. early. Reboot early. Reboot often. Uh, don't cut your wires too short. Turn off CEC. And uh, call uh, us. Call, call tech support. So, everybody, thank you so much. We'll see you thank all next you. time.